So there is no greater legal norm in the world than the one against slavery. It is unlawful in every country in the world, and yet there are more people enslaved now than at any time in human history. Globally, modern-day slavery is the second largest criminal industry after narcotics trafficking, and it's the fastest growing crime on our planet today. And the data, while it's important to give scope to this issue, continues to remain imprecise because the crime is clandestine even though its victims are hidden in plain sight. The most reliable, the most recent, and the most conservative data tells us that at any given time, there are at least 40 million people enslaved around our planet. Of those, approximately 5.4 per every thousand are adults. Approximately 4.4 per every thousand are children. It is a crime that discriminates on the basis of gender, claiming at least 70% of its victims as women and girls, and the highest prevalence of slavery around the world is actually on the African continent. The type of slavery that exists there the most is forced labor. So there are different types of crimes that constitute slavery. You may have heard of sex trafficking, certainly forced labor, debt bondage, even forced marriage. But it's forced labor that I want to talk about today. What is it? It's compelled work. Work, something of commercial value, compelled, done under force, fraud, or coercion. It's not simply exploitation. You are not free to leave. And the forced labor that's happening all around our planet today, so much of it is happening because of our consumption. There is an inherent tension. As consumers, we want to buy products at the lowest possible price, and corporations want to sell us those products at the price we want to buy them at, and they want to make a profit. So it should surprise no one that slavery actually may be the most common ingredient across global supply chains. And let me give you a snapshot of what I mean. This chart represents the top five, just the top five slave-made products that are imported annually into the G20 countries, the wealthiest countries around our planet. What are the top five? First is technology, laptops, computers, and mobile phones. Two is garments, fish, cocoa, and sugarcane. Their total value just to the G20 countries, $354 billion worth of imports, and the top importer around the world is the United States at $144 billion. So let me actually drill down on that a little bit further with you. How many of you out there in the audience today would wantingly, willingly go out and buy a product that you would use every single day if I told you that in order to make that product, a seven-year-old child had to be enslaved? How many of you? I like the response. And how many of you own a cell phone, a smartphone, a laptop, or an electric vehicle? And so let's talk about that. This chart actually represents all three and represents just one of the minerals, one of the minerals tied to slavery that's being used in our technology. It's cobalt. And what do we know about cobalt? The top horizontal line actually represents the amount of cobalt in each of these devices. The second horizontal line actually re represents the global sales of these products around the world, and we know it's only increasing. And the third horizontal line represents the total amount of cobalt usage in electronics in 2016. What else do we know about cobalt? We know that the majority of the world's cobalt, some estimates put it as high as two-thirds, come from one country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is in Central Africa, one of the most mineral-rich and yet devastatingly poor places on our Earth. We also know that there is so much of that cobalt that needs to be mined manually. And so what does that mean? It means that 40,000 children, children as young as seven years old, are put into those mines under the most brutish and hellish conditions. And if you want to see their images, if you want to hear about their stories, if you want to read about this, you can all use the technological devices we all own to actually learn more about it. And so these minerals, which are all used in our technology, 
worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that should be alleviating the poverty of this country has instead fueled a war since 1998 that has killed more than five million people, has resulted in untold number of rapes, and has sentenced an entire generation to slavery. It simply should not be, it cannot be, that the technological devices that are changing our present and our future, that are so important to our way of life, that are the enjoyment for our children, for their video gaming and their social media, for their connection to the world, are coming at the cost of our humanity. So how do we create change? I have six very specific suggestions about that. And before I get to them, the one thing I want to say to you about change is when you look at the change that happens in our own country, particularly about justice movements, change never happens from inaction. It's never straightforward. But do not ever, ever underestimate the power of grassroots movements or the power of an individual to create a profound force for change in our country. So the first idea, it's a fairly simple one. Take one step, just one step, to becoming a more conscious consumer. And what does that mean? Take any of the top five I just gave you, learn how to buy your next chocolate bar more ethically. Learn how to buy a piece of clothing or the next piece of fish more ethically. It's not easy. There's actually not an app for you. There's no seal. There's no certification. Because as it turns out, global supply chains, perhaps because they are incentivized by both us and the corporations, are actually complicated chaos. The second is because no one individual could actually do this on, their, on your own. I would actually encourage all of us, particularly those of us who engage in our communities, to make sure that our local and state tax dollars are no longer being used to support slavery. And so, again, we can start small, whether it's the athletic material in our, our school stores or at our, our state universities or our school supplies. And over time, go to a regulatory mechanism where we are ensuring that our state dollars are no longer being used to support slavery. And to continue on that, the United States is one of the largest consumers in the world. And we have a difficult and painful history that we know all too well with slavery. We know it is the greatest human rights violation against the soul of a person. There is no way we should be tolerating that our federal tax money is ever being used to procure items that are made from slavery or to build buildings in our country for materials made of slavery. So we need to start going down a process to start banning and start sourcing ethically to make sure that we are not supporting the slavery around the world. The fourth is to actually join a small but morally courageous group of countries, including the United Kingdom, Australia, France, and to some degree Switzerland, that have now put laws in place requiring corporations to investigate their supply chains and publicly report on them. If the United States did this for US corporations, it would be a game changer in the world. So if you are so inclined, call your senators, your congressmen and women, and tell them it is time for the United States to pass a modern day slavery bill. The fifth idea is one supporting some of the courageous work done by a small group of CEOs. There's one CEO in particular for a company called Abel. And what he does is he actually puts the lowest living wage of his employee on something called a nutrition label. My idea is a little different, something more along the lines of a freedom traceability label. In this particular example, it takes a chocolate bar. But if we could take the ingredients of the product, whether it's the shirt that you're buying, it's the laptop that you're buying, or the chocolate bar that you're buying, list the ingredient, list the source country, list the risk rating of slavery in that country. If the corporation is independently auditing, or if the corporation is doing work to actually determine that what they are actually procuring is ethically sourced, they can tell us that. And so we know the risk is actually much lower. We live in a country right now where I can walk into a restaurant, look on a menu, and know that the pasta dish on that menu is 1,800 calories. I now look at that pasta dish and say, nah, I'm not gonna eat it. If I can do that, why is it that I can't buy a pair of shoes or a gold necklace or a T-shirt 
and know whether or not a child may have been tortured in actually making it. And so last, but certainly not least, um, this is an incredibly bold idea and one that was created and generated by an extraordinary group of people. The question that was asked is what would a global awareness campaign look like? And two teams of people, um, some of the most creative, brilliant people that I have come to meet uh, from two media companies called Geometry and J. Walter Thompson took it upon themselves and it is through their incredible generosity and through their extraordinary creativity they put together a very large campaign of what a global awareness campaign would look like. That particular idea was actually incubated at the place that I now work called Grace Farms Foundation. And because of the incredible generosity and commitment of the leadership of Grace Farms Foundation, the creative was actually finalized. Unchained.com is what it's called. Unchained.org is what it's called. And it's now been released into the world. It's still very much under development. It's not at all finalized. And that's because the leadership of Grace Farms realized that this issue is so complicated, it's going to take an interdisciplinary effort to bring experts from around the world to actually look at the supply, supply chain issue, to actually figure out where the slave-built links are. And so most recently, a group of technologists came together, most who didn't know anything about slavery, raised their hand to actually figure out how to create solutions to this issue, whether or not machine learning tools and ethical blockchains using satellite and cell service could be used together to force transparency and traceability through the supply chain and make it the solution instead of the cause. So I offer you now a glimpse into Unchained.org. journey uh, onto the conscious consumerism walk, uh, there is a very skeletal but important group of resources and educational material. And while this project and this entire site is still under development, um, we are constantly looking for anybody who may be interested in actually engaging with us. So I just want to leave you with this one final thought. Um, and it is actually a very prescient warning from Dr. Martin Luther King more than 50 years ago. It was actually in his letter from Birmingham jail where he penned the very famous phrase, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Immediately after that, he said, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. For far too long, we have actually lived as if this truth does not apply to us. We have consumed as if it has no consequence. We have engaged in our buying habits as if they are a matter of private or individual concern. They are not. The call upon us is very clear. Each one of us has a choice to make about how we want to choose to reform our relationship to the things we buy, from what we wear to what we eat, to how we choose to engage in the technological devices or create them that are constantly changing our present and our future. Perhaps most fundamentally, we need to expand the idea that personal freedom requires us to guarantee the freedom of others. We are the solution to modern day slavery. We are actually the ones who can save the slaves around the planet. But in order to do that, we have to first choose to liberate ourselves. In order to do that, first, we have to choose to be free. Thank you.